Crossing Bocchitto There is a river called Bocchitto that cuts through Mississippi. In the days before the war between the states, in the days before the Trail of Tears, Bocchitto was a boundary. On one side of the river lived the Choctaws, a sovereign nation of people. On the other side lived the plantation owners and their slaves. If a slave escaped and made his way across Bocchitto, the slave was free. The slave owner could not follow. That was the law. So, long ago and far away, when Bocchitto was the boundary, a Choctaw mama woke her little daughter up one Sunday morning. Martha Tom, you lazy little girl, you get yourself up out of bed. Get up and put your dress on. The sun has been up for two hours, and I have a wedding to cook for today. Take this basket, fill it with blackberries, and hurry back. Dragging herself out of bed, Martha Tom went looking for blackberries. When she couldn't find any on the Choctaw side of the river, she did something she'd been told never to do. She went crossing Bocchitto to the other side. For the only way to cross Bocchitto in those days was a stone path just beneath the surface of the river. Only the Choctaws knew it was there, for the Choctaws had built it. When the river flooded, they built the stones up. When the river sank in times of drought, they built the stones down, always just beneath the muddy surface of the water. Martha Tom went cross in Bocchitto. She went deep into those Mississippi woods, deeper than any woods we've ever seen. For there are no woods today like those old Mississippi woods. She found the blackberries and filled her basket, but when she looked to the sky for the sun to lead her home, it was cloudy and she was lost. She thought she heard a voice and followed it going still deeper into those woods. She found a clearing headed by a stump covered with grapevines. The clearing was filled with logs rolled out as if they were benches. Then she heard someone coming and dove into the vines. Through the leaves she saw a skinny little black man with a bushy head of white hair, hobbling with a cane. He put the cane aside and very carefully stepped under the stump. While Martha Tom watched, he lifted his heels and began to stomp, then wave his arms, then talk. He is crazy, thought Martha Tom. There is nobody there. Then the man called out, We are bound for the promised land. What happened next would change Martha Tom's life forever. For a hundred voices came in reply, unseen voices, like spirit voices, shivering the low-hanging moss in the trees, whispering, We are bound for the promise." land. This seemed to invigorate the old man, and he went to stomping and calling again, we are bound for the promised land. Once again, the voices came in reply, human voices this time, closer and closer they came, calling, we are bound for the promised land. The old man bowed his head and said, oh, who will come and go with me? A hundred slaves replied, stepping from behind the trees and rising up from the bushes where they were hiding, We will come and go with you. We are bound for the promised land. It was the calling together of the forbidden slave church deep in those Mississippi woods. The man began to preach and the people began to sing. Martha Tom had never heard music like this before, but it touched her deeply. Then something else touched her on the shoulder. She looked up to see the biggest man she had ever seen, his chest so big it was about to pop the buttons off. You're lost, little girl, he said in a deep voice that seemed to smile. Martha Tom nodded. You're Choctaw from across Bocchitto. She nodded again. You're afraid and want to go home. Once more she nodded. What is your name, little girl? Martha Tom. Well, Martha Tom, 
I'll get my son to take you back to the river. You can find your way home from there. Little Mo, he called. There appeared a boy of about ten. Little Mo, this girl is lost. She is chalked off from across Bokchito. Take her to the river bank and she could get home from there. Little Mo looked at his daddy. He looked at Martha Tom and said, Daddy, I can't do it. I'm your father and I'm telling you, what do you mean you can't do it? Daddy, the men from the plantation house told us if the children are seen playing near the river, our whole family will get in trouble. I can't do it. But his father seemed undaunted. He knelt down to the boy and said, Son, son, it's about time you learned. There is a way to move amongst them where they won't even notice you. It's like you're invisible. You move not too fast, not too slow, eyes to the ground. Away you go. Now give it a try and get this little girl home. Well, it sounded like a fun game to play. So little Mo took Martha Tom by the hand and off they went, just as little Mo's daddy had taught him, not too fast not too slow, eyes to the ground, away you go. They skirted the plantation house and walked right in front of the porch where the owners were doing their sipping and their sighing that Sunday morning, but no one paid them any mind. We must be invisible, thought little Mo. Soon they were at the river, and it was Martha Tom's turn to lead. She took him to the stone path, but he couldn't see it beneath the surface of the water. This will be a fun game to play, she thought. She took five paces back to get a good running start, then leapt into the river. Little Mo reached out to grab her dress as she flew by to keep her from drowning. But when she landed in the river, she stood up. Little girl, what kind of a witch are you? Little Mo cried. Martha Tom laughed. I'm not any kind of a witch. You can do it, too. Come on. She took little Mo by the hand, and together the two of them went cross and Bochito to the Choctaw side. Even before they stepped from the stones to the earth, little Mo heard it, the sound of the drums, at first he thought it must be the heartbeat of the earth itself. It was the old men calling the Choctaws to the wedding ceremony. As he and Martha Tom looked down the street of log homes, they saw women step out of every doorway. Choctaw women dressed in long white cotton dresses skimming the ground. Their shiny black hair fell well below their waist. The women formed a line and began a procession to the clearing at the end of town. They began a stomp dance to the beat of the drums, but it was far less a stomp and far more the lift and glide of a dance. When they reached the clearing, they formed two circles, the women and the men, and the wedding ceremony began. The old men began to sing the wedding song. It is still sung today in Mississippi and Oklahoma, just as they sang it then. Way, hey, ah, hey, ah, you are, hey, you are, hey, ah, hey, ah, way, hey, ah, hey, ah, you are, hey, you are, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey, ah, you are, hey, you are, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey, ah, you are, hey, you are, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey, ah, you are, hey, you are, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey, ah, hey, Yo! Little Mo had never heard music like this before, but it touched him deeply. Then something else touched them both on the shoulder. It was Martha Tom's mother. Little girl, little girl, you are in for it now. You have been crossing Bochito. Now, I'm not mad at him, but you take him to the river and come right back and give me those blackberries. You are in for it now. 
Martha Tom knew better than to smile, but she wasn't afraid. She knew her mother would cackle like a mad crow on the outside, while inside she would coo like a dove with love for her daughter. Martha Tom took little Mo to the river and showed him how to cross on his own, and this began a friendship that would last for years. Every Sunday morning, Martha Tom would cross Bochito on her way to church. She sat with little Mo's family now. She listened to the preaching, and she sang the songs in English. Then every evening, she would sing them in Choctaw as she went cross in Bochito on her way home. Then one day, trouble came. It always does in stories or in life. Trouble comes. There was a slave sale, and twenty slaves were sold. They were to leave for New Orleans the very next day before sunrise. The men from the households were called together to listen to the names being read. Little Mo's mother was on that list. As her husband walked home, he wondered how to tell his family what had happened. He decided to let them have their last meal in peace. When the children stood to clear the table, he motioned for them to be seated. Feeling his knees grow weak, he supported himself with his right palm on the table while his left hand stroked his wife on the neck and shoulders. Your mother has been sold, he said. No, she cried. The tears seemed to squirt down her cheeks. The children looked at their parents and began to cry. They had never seen their mother and father like this. This is our last evening together, he shouted. Stop your crying. I want every one of you to find something small and precious, something to give your mother to remember you by. Something she can hide, something they can't take away. Now get up and help your mother pack. You will not see her again. No one moved. I am your father. Get up and help your mother pack. No one moved. Then little Mo pulled his father's sleeve and said, Daddy, there is a way we can stay together. No, son, it is a slave sale. It is final. Daddy. We can go cross in Bochito. Son, they'll have the dogs guarding the river tonight to prevent a crossing. Daddy, listen to me. We can go just like you taught me. Not too fast, not too slow, eyes to the ground. Away you go. We'll be invisible. Daddy, we have to give it a try. For the first time that day, hope filled his father's heart. You are right, son. We have to give it a try. He grabbed seven burlap bags and gave one to each member of his family, saying, Pack quick, pack light, pack for running. We may have to. They did pack quick. They packed light, but not quick enough. For the men in the plantation house saw them working late. They called out those with the dogs and the lanterns and the guns, and they surrounded that little house in the woods. When little Mo's daddy stood with his family around him, he looked out the back door and said, We could go out that way. It would be dark and maybe safer. But this night's journey is not about darkness and safety. It is about faith. It is about freedom. We will go out the front door. And so they did. Out the front door, down the front steps, out the front gate, walking just as little Mo had reminded them, not too fast, not too slow, eyes to the ground, away you go. Then something remarkable happened. This family became invisible. They walked right into the circle of lanterns, so close the light should have shone on their clothes, but the light shone right through them. They walked so close to the dogs, they could have reached out and stroked the dog's fur, but the dogs did not know they were there. Soon they stood on the banks of Bochito. Little Mo looked to the clouds covering the moon and said, Daddy, I can't get us across. I've never been here at night. I can't do it. 
but his father was undaunted. He picked little Mo up and sat him on his hip till their faces almost touched. Son, the time has come. You know what we call you, little Mo, but you also know that is not your name. Son, son, the hour is at hand. Your name is Moses. Now, Moses, get us across that water. Moses leapt down from his father's hip and went running to the river. He dipped his arms deep into the chilly waters and went back and forth till he found the path. Then, quick as a bird, he flew across the stones and burst into Martha Tom's home. I'm sorry, I know it's late, but we're trying to come across. The men are after us, the men with the dogs and the lanterns and the guns. Can you help us? Martha Tom's mother, as you know, was the take charge type. She jumped out of bed and talked as she dressed. Son, you get right back to your family and hide them in the bushes near the path. Go now, run. You'll know when to come across. Go, I have work to do. She went to every home in that village, pushed open the doors and called inside, Women, put on your white dresses. Bring a candle and meet me at the river. We're going to have a ceremony tonight. The cross in kind. And so it came to pass. Those men on the far side of the river, those men with the dogs and the lanterns and the guns, they saw emerging from the dark fog on the Choctaw side what looked to them like a band of angels. Angels carrying candles and casting a halo glow in the fog around their faces. Then rising from the bushes and coming to life in front of them, they saw seven runaway slaves. They lifted their guns to fire. Then they froze, for stepping out of that band of angels, they saw the most beautiful little angel of them all. Her right hand held a candle. Her left hand was outstretched, and she was floating on the water. She was singing as she moved, a song they had heard the slaves sing many times, but never in the tongue she sang it. She sang. Nihita kishta yo big manochi sasot mimi tit amala hole to pama chi hota yalashki. We are bound for the promised land. We are bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? We are bound for the promised land. She took little Mo by the hand. He took his mother. She took her husband. And together all seven of them went crossing Bokchito. When they reached the fog on the far side of the river, they blew out the candles and disappeared into the lightness of it all, never to be seen on the slave side again. But the descendants of those people, they still talk about that night. The Choctaws talk about the cunning of that little girl. The black people talk about the faith of that little boy. But maybe the Anglos tell it best, for they talk about the night their forefathers witnessed. Seven black spirits walking on the water to their freedom.